So now let's work on the username. First of all, let's make sure that we send the encrypted password. Assume of this, and now let's work on the username. So the username is just in the beginning is going to be a combination of the first name and last name. So let's temp username is going to be a combination of the first first name plus last name. Okay. I wrote everything wrong. So this is going to be last name. Okay. And this is also first name. I can't type because I always record late, so I'm always tired. So now let's go to the uh, to postman, and then we're going to see. So the username is going to be a combination of the first name and then the last name. Okay, this is like the first thing, but we got to make sure that this is unique. So we're going to go to the database and, and search for the user by this username. If it does exist, we need to change this. And I'm not going to change like everything. So I'm going to make sure that we have like the core of the username, which is the combination of the first name and last name and add like a number. Okay, this is going to be random. And when we add a number, we're going to go again to the database and check if this username exists. If it exists, we can add another number, a random number. Okay. And if it doesn't exist, we're going to take this as the new username by keeping the first name and last name as most websites do. So we're going to have a function that runs every time that the username does exist in the database. So this is going to be pretty cool. It's like recursive uh, validation. So we're going to, so let's create the function export to validate username. I hope I wrote this right. Validate username. Okay. We're going to pass a username. And then we're going to do the test right here. So we're going to have a variable. Let A is going to be equal to false in the beginning. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to go and do and then while. Okay. While A is true. So this works like this. So while A is true, we're going to run everything inside do. So this is a function that's going to run as long as while equal true. Okay. But the thing, as you see, this you're going to see that we defined A to be false. But the thing we do is just it's going to run at least once regardless of the condition. So the first time is going to run even if A is true or false. So the first time is going to run and then it's going to check if A is false, then it's going to stop and quit the function. And if it's true, then it's going to run the code again. And what we're going to do right here is just simply check if there is a username, you know, a user with this username that we said. Okay, so we're going to go away. When we evaluate, the function is going to be async. And we're going to go to the user. We already imported right here from the models. And then we're going to find one. We're going to find, okay, sorry, as always, find by, I'm sorry again, by using the username, okay? So this is, we're going to search by the username. And the value that we're going to send to search by is the same. So we just write it like this, okay? And the thing right now, if check is true, that means the username exists. Then here we're going to change the username, okay? And then we're going to make A equal true. Okay. And I'm going to explain why. And then else is going to equal false. Okay. So we get, we have our check. We found that there is a user that have this username. Okay. So we're going to change the username, but we're not going to stop. We're going to run the function again and the function to be run again. We're going to make A true. So while A true, then it's going to run again because this username that we created that we're going to create in a second is going to be, we don't know. It may exist with another user. So we're going to go to the database again and check. Okay. And then it's going to enter the function again. If it does exist, it's not a problem. It's going to repeat itself. But then if the check doesn't exist and the username doesn't exist in the database, we're just going to be in the else and then it's going to make it false. And then as you see, this is works only in true. And when it's false, it's going to quit the function. And after this, we're just going to return the username. I think this is pretty clear. It doesn't need any more clarification. Now we're going to change the username. As I said, we're going to have the first name and, uh, and the last name, and then we're going to have add a random number to it. So Simply, we're going to have a function that generates a new number. So let's do with something creative. Okay. I just want to share with this with you. So let's open the, the console and then right here, let's console log the new date. Okay. So this is a date as you see right here in the console. This is a date. And we want to get the number of the milliseconds. We're going to do get time. Okay. And we'll get the number of milliseconds as you see right here. Or can you use a different way. We can just go plus new date, which is the same. It does the same. and gets the, the number of milliseconds. And the thing, the number of milliseconds from now to what? So the start of the time. And this is an interesting one. It goes back, you know, from, from now, from now, the time now, to one, you know, to the 1st of January 1970. Okay, which is the start of using the Unix 
uh, date system okay so this number right here this number of milliseconds if we want to like right here and then once milliseconds two years and then we paste it right here and then we're gonna set uh, 52 years and 52 years if we went to the calculator and then do 2022 minus 1970 is gonna get us 52 <laughs> this is like the start of time in the unique system so system so it's like zero for the time so this is the i just wanted to share this with you because we're gonna use it so we're gonna get this and then we can do something like cool so this this new this, this number can be generated you know another user can generate it the same way because if you run this code in the same time we're gonna get the same results okay so we don't want that so we want to like uh, make it different so we're just gonna multiply it by math dot random and math dot random just generates a number between zero and one so it's not gonna be one it's gonna be like zero to like zero point nine 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 okay it's just not one and the way this is works let's let's console log it and we can see this number okay and the beauty about this thing now this is a number different than this okay so we generate a number that could be different even if you run the code at the same time and this way we can like just get the first number just the first number and then we're going to use it to add it to the string to the string okay so we can take all of this okay and then we convert it to string dot to string and then we substring and substring is to cut from the string from a point to a point so it's going to be from zero to one so only want to get one number okay and then we're going to console log and as you see we get five if we save again we're going to get an, an, a random number which is going to be six okay so this is pretty cool so this is the way that i'm going to use to generate my number so we're going to take this okay let's take it right here let's remove this and go back to the controller and note the validation and right here we change in the username this way so username we're gonna add to it you know so kind of concat the string so it's gonna be plus equal and then we're gonna post this right here okay this is quite easy and so now let's call the function so we're gonna go right here you can like change the username itself like username and now change it or you can like have a new variable let's have a new variable for example new username it's gonna equal we're gonna wait because this is our operation that takes time uh, a return a promise so what we call it validate username okay and then we're gonna it's imported i think no it's imp let's see yeah it's been imported and then we gonna pass the temporary username the temporary username is just the combination of the first name and last name and then we're gonna make sure now that the username is the new username okay so let's use this this is let's go to postman and now it's here here we're not gonna have any username okay so this is gonna be generated automatically okay so now let's go to the database to make sure that let's see so this first name and last name is different than this combination okay this is a different one so let's go and send okay it's gonna get created normally and the user username as you see right here is a combination of the first name and last name we go to the database it's been created and as i said combination of these two now let's try again with the same information so someone has the same name and the last name and let's see if it's gonna generate the same one or something different okay so if we send of course we're gonna change the email because we can't have the same email and then let's try now to send again and let's see if it's different send and then as you see right now the username is a different and it has uh, one right here okay so let's go to the database so this username and this username are different this is added another number which is one okay so this is like pretty pretty cool and you learn like something cool which is like a recursive test to the database that should be done you know some sometimes you do it live okay to check it on the front end so i think this was pretty cool and very informative so i hope you like this and now let's go and see what next